Could this be the element of surprise? We'll find out this week on Motoring 2003. Oils fine-tuned for different engines. And Midas, Total Car Care, we do that. You know, along with driving the vehicles, one of the more enjoyable things about working on motoring is being able to meet the car designers, many who are getting younger and their jobs are getting much tougher. I mean, with so many new vehicles on the market today, trying to stand out from the crowd is getting more challenging. And you know, designers like to talk about where they get their inspiration from. In the old days, it might have been a jetliner. Well, today, many manufacturers are really focusing on attracting young people into the family. So designers will talk about luggage and hiking boots as their inspiration. Well, you know, Pontiac might have been one of the first companies to come out with a vehicle that was really radically different and aimed strictly at young people. That, of course, was the Aztec, a vehicle that became a sales flop. Well, today, Honda, one of the world's most respected and conservative car companies, is also coming out with something completely different. The inspiration was a lifeguard station in California, and the vehicle is called the Honda Element. When the concept was first introduced, most journalists predicted that the eventual production model would have to be more restrained considering the company's design history. But to everyone's surprise, when the element was unveiled, it was obvious Honda had not thrown away the box. It's very radical for, for this company. Yeah, your feelings on it? Uh, yes, we're definitely out on a limb here. We've heard that quite a bit, but it's, it's, it's great. It's exciting, you know. The executives let us go here in North America, and uh, this is what we came up with. So we're very excited about it. We need to get youthful buyers. I mean, currently in the Honda lineup, we have we have the Honda Civic, which is youthful. But uh, what we're really trying to do is make a statement to to the youth. And obviously, it's more about young at heart. We realize uh, people who are younger obviously have less money to buy a vehicle. But the, our goal is to really appeal to them so they can aspire to this vehicle. One of the inspirations for the exterior styling was uh, a lifeguard station and in Los Angeles a lifeguard station is generally a place where people meet after school. It's tall, it's functional, it can hold a lot of gear. So that was one of our original design inspirations for this vehicle which you can see led to a tall vehicle, upright vehicle and even the roof is curved kind of like a surfboard. It started as a CRV base, but it ended up with something that's almost completely exclusive for the element. We widened it and we put bigger tires on it and we had to make a completely, completely new fuel system to lower the floor. This vehicle's powertrain is completely based on the NP2 engine, which is uh, currently found in the four-cylinder Accord or in the new CRV. So it's basically common with those two. The thing I can't get past, I like the design, but I can't stand this uh, plastic body cladding. Just when uh, GM CEO Bob Lutz lays down the law with the Pontiac division, no more body cladding, which is a fantastic thing, all of a sudden you've got Honda Element, uh, Subaru Baja, sticking all this plastic stuff on. It's like plastic is being sold at distressed prices to the automakers now, you know. Now, I know Honda said that the reason is um, it's scratch-proof and you can lean your bicycle against it because we're always leaning our bicycles against our vehicles. So, I mean, the only practical uh, application I can think of is next time I'm in downtown Toronto and a bike courier smashes into my car, it won't leave a scratch. Very durable mat, and I like the headroom for my hat. Yes, uh, the door pops. I think it's a very fine looking machine. Uh, I personally prefer pickup trucks <laughs> because they will haul a great deal more, but I can see this is configured also to do hauling. Uh, the rear seats, I'm sure, fold forward. Are you going to give it up for your pickup truck? 
No, I will not give up my pickup truck. <laughs> Driving-wise, it's fantastic. It really holds the road well. It um, was great on gas for what we did. And um, the two-wheel drive, the manual was just great. We had a lot of fun with it, and uh, I enjoyed it. Is it square cool? I, mean, I think it is. <laughs> Why? Because it's, everything is so, I don't know, the, the, when the new cars come out, they've, they're all rounded. The Beetle, it's all rounded. Yeah, it's roomy. I'm, it, they open outwards like Bonnie and Clyde, kind of, so and that's what really attracted me to it. I liken it to, remember those uh, toys from our youth, Transformers, where you can switch and mix and match them to different configurations? I kind of like that, you know, with the way you can form the seats and tailgates into a living space. And uh, so, you know, if, if the kids like it, you know, it, it'll do well, I think, you know, but, but who knows? We don't think it's much of a risk. You know, we, we, we think we've done our homework here, and we believe that this is the right vehicle for that, for that audience. Do these doors give Honda a leg up on the rest of the industry? Oh, <laughs> sorry, ma'am. More later on Kenzie's Corner. You know, back in 1984, Toyota and Chrysler introduced what was to become the modern minivan. Now, whilst the Chrysler went on to great things, the Toyota disappeared into obscurity. Then they replaced that original van with the Previa, an odd duck in its own right. Finally came the Sienna. Well, this week on Test Drive, we take a look at the latest edition of Toyota's popular Sienna minivan. The first thing you notice about the latest Sienna is its sheer size. When compared to the previous van, the new one is six and a half inches longer, benefits from a five and a half inch stretch in the wheelbase, and is four and a half inches wider and 1.6 inches taller. It also rides one inch higher, meaning better ground clearance. Now all of this means a lot more interior space and improved versatility. For example, the Sienna is now offered in both seven and eight passenger configurations. You know, Toyota really did have their thinking caps on when they reworked the Sienna. To begin with, the space back behind the third row of seats, well, it'll actually accommodate seven sets of clubs, so you and six buddies can go golfing without taking two cars. Now, if you need more space, it's as simple as one, two. More space yet? No problem. Again, the seats fold down into the back. You've now got a flat floor. If you need more space yet again, you simply remove the two middle seats and you end up with about 150 cubic feet of cargo space. It'll also accommodate a 4x8 sheet of building material flat on the floor and with the tailgate closed. Now that's what you call versatility, but there is one really nice piece. Right here, there's a 115 volt outlet, so if your camera happens to go flat, you can recharge it. Versatility aside, the whole lot has been well thought through, as is witnessed by myriad storage compartments and the grocery bag hooks on the back of the rear seats. The expanded dimensions also add a very sure-footed feel to the Sienna's dynamic qualities. Riding on independent struts up front and a twist beam design in back, the Sienna displayed a remarkably flat and fast ride through the pylons. Add to that the positive feedback through the steering and large P215 65R16 tires, and things do not get any better in the minivan market, period. For those that need yet more reassurance, opting for the top of the line XLE model adds all wheel drive and a vehicle stability control package, along with a ton of other stuff. One of the areas the original Sienna sort of tripped over its shoelaces was under the hood. Whilst the V6 engine was okay, it really had its work cut out for it if you loaded the van up to capacity. That, however, is no longer an issue. What they've done is they've upped the displacement to 3.3 litres, and that means 230 horsepower and 242 pounds-feet of torque. The fact that this bigger motor brings better gas mileage than the previous V6 engine is the icing on a very nice cake. 
Inside, the new Sienna has been very well thought through indeed. To begin with, you get all the usual stuff. Power locks, windows, mirrors, cruise control, a three-zone air conditioner, power driver's seat, and tilt and telescopic steering. You'll also find some neat touches as well. First of all, the radio sits high enough up, you can operate it relying on little other than peripheral vision. You'll find a ton of cubby holes, including a perfect one for your cell phone, and no fewer than 14 cup holders. Now, why any one man needs 14 cup holders is beyond me. You'll also find a convex rear view mirror. Now, this thing allows you to keep an eye on the rug rats in the back. The center console, well, it can be shifted from here and placed between the center row of seats. And in a refreshing change, you get a power window in the side sliding door. Now, the kids are going to love that. On the safety front, the Sienna includes a good set of anti-lock brakes and dual-stage front airbags. As is true of all other minivans, the content available is only limited by the amount of cash you're prepared to throw at the Sienna. Indeed, the list is long enough to boost the base price from $30,000 to a lofty, and are you ready for this, $53,225 for a fully loaded XLE with the all-wheel drive limited package. Ouch, only begins to describe it. Toyota really have done a very good job with this new Sienna. It handles well, it's got the power it cried out for in the past, and it's got versatility coming out of its yin-yang. In short, this is the new benchmark in the minivan market. Our Midas Tip of the Week concerns maximizing tire life. I've always believed in premium quality tires. I think they're well worth the money. But on any tire replacement, it can get expensive, as I'm sure you well know. So you want to get the maximum life. How do you do that? Well, there's a number of things. First of all, make sure you've got a quality tire pressure gauge and check your own tires at least once a month. You'll find you'll have to adjust the pressure significantly sometimes as the outside temperature varies. That's a normal condition. Even if your tires don't have leaks, they will fluctuate in pressure. So check them regularly. Make sure that you're getting wheel alignments done on the car on a regular basis. Ask for a before and after printout on the alignment and check the suspension system and the steering linkage of the vehicle for any worn or damaged parts before you proceed with the alignment. Also, your, your driving habits can dramatically affect the life of your tires. For example, when you're in parking lots at low speed, avoid sharp radius turns. If you can make big sweeping turns, that'll maximize tire life. And you wouldn't believe how much rubber is worn off a tire from, a full, from constantly doing full lock turns. Also, avoid spinning the tires when you accelerate or locking the wheels under braking, avoid that at all costs because obviously that's tire wear as well. You take care of the tires and they'll last a long time. Here's a perfect example. I put brand new tires on this vehicle 78,000 kilometers ago. They had 1030 seconds of tread depth when they went on and they've still got 730 seconds of tread depth right now. And that, after 78,000 kilometers, is amazing. That's testimony to the fact that they had proper inflation checks, alignment was bang on, and driving habits were good. That's your Midas Tip of the Week. to show you a new generation of Chevrolet muscle. This is the Chevy SS. Concept cars are kind of the icing on the cake. We take the, you know, kind of the restraints off uh, on our, the designers, you know, kind of minimize the criteria to help create uh, really a better vision or an endpoint of where we want to go with some of our products. something like the SS concept, which really is celebrating SS heritage. It's really paying homage to it. What is the SS all about? It's about uh, back to basics performance. It's about great looks. This standard Camaro Sport Coupe is just the right car for the new generation that's starting to worry about the cost of the new, new generation. Sometimes I envy them. 
but not when I'm in my SS 350 Rally Sport. Does that make me part of the new generation? Try a Camaro. Well, you've got a 430 horsepower, you know, Gen 3 small block, so that doesn't hurt. <laughs> Made it do some huge meets on the vehicle, and, uh, you know, all of those, uh, you could say, are very formulaic to, to kind of that traditional muscle car uh, vocabulary. But you also have an extra door. You've got a sedan configuration. There's a, uh, a an integrated child seat. So this really is, a, you know, the guy that still likes to drag at the red light, uh, but there's more functionality than what you'd find in a regular coupe. Although design is subjective, many people will tell you that the element simply looks like a box. Well, obviously boxes are becoming trendy because at the other end of the scale, we have Mercedes-Benz offering the G500 box for a whole lot more money, and they can't keep them on the lot. And you know, I know one guy who just loves boxes as long as they're attached to a cab. And of course, that's our man in the Quaker State Garage, Bill Gardner. Well, Brad, you're absolutely right. When it comes to packing cargo, the best shape to work with is a box. It just doesn't look pretty. And you know, when you talk about the look of that Honda Element, I don't know if I could ever warm up to that look. And speaking of warming up, let's talk about uh, a question that we're frequently asked and, and emailed from our viewers about warming up the engine and idling the engine. So let's break it down into two dis distinct categories. Running the engine to warm it up, idling it to warm it up, and once it's up to operating temperature. Now when the engine's cold, there may be some circumstances where running the engine for several minutes is necessary. For example, if the windows are frosted or fogged, you need to wait for a bit of defrost or heat, or if you've got freezing rain conditions, you've got to wait for that idle to settle down to the lowest level before you tiptoe away and put it into gear. If the engine's idling fast, you're going to be in big trouble. Now those circumstances are usually few and far between and there's other things you can do to eliminate those. For example, cleaning the junk out of your garage and putting the vehicle in the garage will eliminate scraping the windows and waiting for the windows to clear in many cases. However, there are vehicles that you can't fit in the garage. My pickup, for example, sits out in the driveway all the time. So what I do is I use the block heater. Now I don't use the block heater, uh, I don't need it to start the engine in cold temperatures. It would start just fine, but it eliminates my warm-up time because the engine's already lukewarm. And that saves me a lot of fuel. It gives me summertime fuel economy in the winter. And that's something you really want to do. Now, if you want to warm the engine up for a minute or two in the winter time, that's okay. Just don't overdo it. Okay? Most vehicles warm up much better when they're under load and being driven, so you want to minimize that warm up time as much as you possibly can. Now let's talk about the vehicle when it's up to operating temperature. Obviously, once it's up to operating temperature, any time you can shut it off, if, if you're stopped somewhere, shut that engine off. Don't idle it unnecessarily. Here's some interesting numbers to look at. This is an emission test report from a vehicle we just tested this morning. Over in this column are the readings that you get on the dynamometer under load. And this column over here are the curb idle readings that you get when the engine's just sitting there at base idle, not even turning the wheels. Now the readings over here for hydrocarbons, remember hydrocarbons are unburned fuel. They're, that's raw gasoline vapors. We were allowed to have 73 parts per million of hydrocarbons and under load we had 30. Quite passable. But when we come over to the idle test, look at the limits. You're allowed to have 200 parts per million and that same vehicle that passed quite handily under load still passed over here but had six times, the, almost six times the hydrocarbon reading at base idle. So there's a good reason right there why you don't want to idle an engine. When it's up to operating temperature, if you're not driving it, shut it off. And remember, idling is zero miles per gallon, so you definitely want to avoid it at all costs. It also dilutes your engine oil and increases the uh, amount of oil changes you're going to have to do. For example, police cars, which idle a lot at intersections when they're doing traffic control, they have to maintain those vehicles more frequently. They have to do more frequent oil and filter changes for that reason alone. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2003. You know, I think if I hear the expression sporty, active, youthful lifestyle one more time, I'm going to heave. What's the biggest problem facing today's youth? Obesity. These kids aren't sporty and active. They're fat. Why does this vehicle have twin doors like this? It's so these kids can get their big lardy butts into the thing. Sporty, active. There's about 200 surfboarders. There's about 
500 surfers and maybe 1,200 skaters. The rest of the kids are sitting at computer games, playing their video games, stuffing Cheetos in their mouth. Now, you might say, who am I to talk? But I've earned this over 20 years of press trip. When I was your age, I was skinny too. And another thing, cost. You know the difference between a surfer and a large pizza? Well, a large pizza can feed a family of four. Surfers are broke. They don't have any money. What do they drive? They don't drive something like this. They drive around an old Ford Crown Victoria X police cars because they're cheap. They can put the surfboard inside and they can sleep in the back. Well, of course, I guess you can sleep in this thing too and maybe that's what they mean by sporty and active. Possibly. But you know, Honda does have one thing right. They understand that they can't tell kids that this is cool. Because if you try and tell kids something like that, they turn you off immediately. What they're doing is throwing this thing out there and saying, what do you think? I do wonder if they're going to have an age limit on this. I mean, if a 35-year-old guy walks into the showroom, they're going to say, sorry, you can't come in here. I don't think they will, because everybody's money spends pretty well. And Honda has learned one thing about marketing. It's the oldest adage in the book. It comes from Alfred P. Sloan, who was the president of General Motors. And he said that you can sell a young man's vehicle to an old man, but you can't sell an old man's vehicle to a young man. I'm Jim Kenzie. The question is, active or not, will young people buy into the Honda element when they ignore the Pontiac Aztec? Well, my feeling is they will, simply because Honda has priced it right with a base price of $23.9. Now, I know I'm not part of the demographics that Honda is chasing, but some suggestions on the color. Why not come up with some more dramatic colors to match the radical design, like electric blue, canary yellow, or fire engine red? Anyway, in a future test drive, Graham will have a closer look at the drivability and the nuts and bolts of the new Honda Element. Make sure you join us for that as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. It is an SUV. It has lots of utility, full down rear seats, big cargo area. You can put a lot of stuff in here. Very convenient vehicle to, to use from that point of view. But it's, it's not just car like, it's a sports car in terms of driving. TSN's Motoring 2003 has been brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil. Oils fine tuned for different engines. And Midas, Total Car Care. We do that.